Well, hello and welcome to Super Great Kids Stories, wise tales from around the world which will make you laugh and sometimes cry, recommended from ages 5 to 105. I'm Kim and I love stories. Hello, Super Great Kids, and how are you doing? I hope you're happy and well. This is the first of two stories this week. The first story is a special bonus story from Irish storyteller Kate Corkery to celebrate St Patrick's Day. If you have connections with Ireland, you might be celebrating St Patrick's Day too. Kate's story is a trickster tale and it's also a how and why story. It explains how some people say that the Giant's Causeway in Northern Ireland came to be there. The Giant's Causeway is a staircase of huge rocks which stretch far out into the sea. These steps look as if they've been chiselled out of the rock by a clever giant craftsman. Visitors come from all over the world to take photographs and hear the story that local people tell of how the Giant's Causeway came to be there. There's a couple of scary giants in this story, so you need to be a bit brave to listen. But it's a great story, so do give it a go. And they are only story giants. Before we start our tale, can you think of any other stories which we've had on our podcast with giants in them? I can think of five. Have a go and see how many you can come up with while we have a quick word with the grown-ups. Hello, super great kids. Did you think of any giant stories? Well, there's Jack and the Beanstalk and A Man Amongst Men, and Odom the Giant, and How the Mosquitoes Became with the Whistling Giants, and Loki and the Wall of Asgard. Now, are you sitting comfortably? Then here is our bonus St. Patrick's Day story with storyteller Kate Corkery. Mouth open, story jump out. Many, many years ago, there lived in Ireland a big, strong man called Finn McCool. Some say he was as tall as a giant. He was certainly a hero who had lots of adventures. One day, he decided to build a stone bridge that would stretch all the way to the coast of Scotland. He lifted tall pillars of rock from the land and placed them one after the other into the seabed. This took some time as they were 40,000 steps to get just right. Imagine that. And when he had finished, oh, he was so proud of his work, and he was delighted to be able to walk over the water without getting his feet wet. He crossed all the way to Scotland and arrived at a huge cave on the other side. This was called Thingol's Cave. He popped in to have a look around. But all of a sudden, he heard a thunderous roar echoing out of the darkness. Wah! Wah! Finn had disturbed a ginormous giant who was furious that someone had dared to build a bridge onto his land. Wah! Wah! As Finn quickly darted out of the cave and ran back across the causeway, the giant emerged and stood up to his full height. <laughs> he plucked a fork of lightning from the sky and he flattened it into a pancake and swallowed it. That was his breakfast. He squeezed water from a passing cloud to wash it down. <sighs> And then he roared like a hurricane across the sea. <laughs> Once I find out who has made this, I will destroy him unless he can show that he is stronger than me, Benadonor, the great red man, Undinadarug, the mighty mountain of thunder. 
I am the mightiest giant in Scotland and no one can match me. The words rang in Finn's ears as he ran all the way home, dropping one of his shoes as he went. It's still there, you know, on the strand if you care to look, if you go there some day. But Finn ran inland and he ran up to the top of Knockmany Hill where he lived at the time with his lovely wife, Una. Una was surprised to see him home so soon. Even more surprised to see him cowering under the table. What's the matter, Finn? Why are you hiding under the table? There's an enormous g -g 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 giant looking for me. He wants to f f fight with me and, and there's no way I could win against him. He's terrifying. He's huge. Well, said Una, there's no point in hiding. Don't you know anything at all about giants? If giants can't see you with their big eyes, they can smell you with their big nose. So come out from under the table. We'll have to think of a trick to get the better of him without you having to fight him at all. But how, said Finn, he'll be here in no time as soon as people tell him it was me that built the bridge. Don't panic, Finn. Just do as I say, said Una, very calmly. She opened the cupboard and took out a white, frilly nightdress and a white, frilly baby's bonnet. Put these on quickly and squeeze yourself into the cradle over there by the fire. Pretend to be a baby. A baby, said Finn. Yes, and take this baby's rattle as well. Finn did as he was told. Just then, the ground began to tremble as giant footsteps were making their way up the hill. Oh, that's him, said Finn. He'll be here any minute. What will we do? You pretend to be asleep and I'll start making bread. Bread? Yes, griddle bread. I have a plan. Una started to mix flour, salt and buttermilk together in a bowl. She shaped the mixture into three big loaves of bread. Then she found two heavy iron griddle pans. They're like frying pans, but they're made of heavy metal. And she slipped them into the first two loaves so you couldn't see them. Then she baked the bread. And when it was cooked, she set the loaves to cool on the windowsill. Mmm, they smelt lovely. Three loud thuds were heard outside. The door was pushed open and the huge red head of the giant glared in. Is this the home of Finn McCool? He thundered. Yes, it is, Mr Giant. Uh, but Finn is not here at the moment. He, he's away hunting. I'm just here on my own with the baby. I've come all the way here to fight with him and I'm not leaving till I do. Oh, would you like to come in and have a cup of tea while you're waiting? Yes, I could do with a cup of tea, said the giant. Ah, I'll put the kettle on so, said Una. Oh, dear, Mr Giant, we seem to be out of water. Would you mind bringing me... Some water? Finn usually gets it from a fine spring well somewhere down there under the rocks. He says it's no bother, so I'm sure it will be no trouble for a fine, big, strong man like yourself. The giant didn't like to be asked favours, but he grabbed the bucket and he turned back down the hill to find the spring. He dug so hard into the rocks that he tore a cleft 400 feet deep. Oh, my goodness, this made him sweat, and he huffed and he puffed his way back up the hill after filling the bucket with water. Una was waiting for him outside the house. Oh, thank you for doing me that little favour, Mr Giant. Before you come inside, I have another small request. As you may have noticed, the wind has changed direction, and it is now blowing right in the front door. Whenever this happens, my husband Finn simply lifts the house up and turns it round to face the other way. He says it's no bother, so I'm sure it will be no trouble for a fine, big, strong man like yourself. Turn the house around, asked the giant. Yes, please, said Una. Finn does it all the time whenever I ask him. 
The giant was confused. But he did not want to let on that he was tired or that he was less powerful than this Finn. Anything he can do, I can do better, muttered the giant as he pulled himself up to his full height. He stretched his long, strong arms around the roof of the house. He took a deep breath and he lifted the whole house up in the air. Then he... He turned it round to face the other way. By now he was huffing and puffing and totally exhausted. Thank you, said Una. The tea is ready. And I've made some tasty fresh bread as well. You're welcome to try some. The red-faced giant squeezed his way into the house and he squatted on a chair that was far too small for him. By now he was hungry as well as thirsty and he greedily grabbed a whole loaf of bread um, and bit into it. <laughs> the giant hollered, What kind of bread is this? It's broken my big front tooth. And with that, he spat a big, ugly, green and yellow, dirty giant's tooth onto the floor. Oh, it was disgusting. He never brushed them, you know. Oh, Mr. Giant, that's my husband's favourite bread. He loves a crunchy crust. Here, you could try another loaf. It, it may not be so hard to swallow. Go on, Mr. Giant. The giant grabbed a second loaf and he stuffed it into his mouth. Um, um, <clears throat> oh! Again he hollered and he spat out another big, green, ugly, yellow, dirty tooth onto the floor. <laughs> now the giant had no front teeth. He shouted and he roared. No one can eat bread like that. Bread is as hard as anything. It's broken my two front teeth, he said. Please, please, please don't shout, Mr. Giant. You'll wake the baby. Baby? The giant looked in the cradle. Finn began to cry like a baby. <laughs> mummy, mummy, I'm hungry, mummy. Are you hungry, my son? Here. Eat some bread. Una handed Finn, who was pretending to be the baby, the one loaf of bread that was safe to eat. It had nothing hidden inside, nothing hard. He took a piece of bread and started to nibble it. <sighs> and he nibbled it all up, swallowed it all down, and gurgled happily. The giant was confused. His eyes were popping out of his head. He couldn't believe that a baby could chew bread that was so hard that had broken his own front teeth. He began to wonder about the man he was waiting to meet, the man he was waiting to fight. Who was this Finn McCool who had dared to build a causeway all the way across the sea? A man who tore up massive rocks from the hillside whenever his wife asked for water. A man who turned his whole house around whenever the wind changed. A man whose baby son could chew bread that broke his own giant front teeth. This man must indeed be bigger and stronger than me, he thought. I no longer want to meet this Finn McCool. I want to go home as fast as I can. The giant made excuses to Una. No, I don't have time. Uh, no more time here to be waiting around for your husband. You just warn him never to come near my land again. If he does, if he does, he'll be sorry. I'll beat the living daylights out of him. I'll give him your message, said Una. I must go now. But, 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 but before I do... Let me take one look at that baby's teeth. Oh, of course, Mr. Giant. Open your mouth, baby. Let the giant have a good look. Finn opened his mouth wide. Ah. The giant p 
peered in. Mm. Mm. His um, strongest teeth are at the back, Mr Giant, said Una. If you put your finger in, you'll feel how sharp they are. The giant stuck his middle finger right into the back of Finn's mouth. And what do you think happened next? <laughs> of course, Finn ah, bit into the finger as hard as he could. The giant roared in pain. He jumped back. He hit his head off the rafters, nearly knocked himself out. He burst out the door. He fled down the hill and he kept running and running till he reached the coast. He took off across the giant's causeway. And as he ran, he pulled up as many steps as he could. By the time he got back to Scotland, he had broken most of the bridge so nobody could ever use it again. From the top of Knockmany Hill, Finn could see the destruction the giant was causing. He tried to stop him by grabbing a big fistful of earth and hurling it after him. But Finn missed, and the clump of earth remained in the sea. And you know what it became? It became the Isle of Man. It's there to this day. Finn turned to Una and said, What would I do without you, Una? I'm such a lucky man to have a wife as clever as you. You helped me to frighten off that bully without raising a finger or anyone getting hurt. Yes, said Una. Where bullies are concerned, it's better to use your thinking brain than your fighting fists. And they all lived happily ever after. Snip, snap, snout. The story is out. Oh, thanks to Kate Corkery for that story. And an especially big thanks to all of our listeners in Langley in Canada. Oh, and well done for being brave. That was a brilliantly scary giant's voice, wasn't it? And if you're ever lucky enough to go to County Antrim in Northern Ireland, you can go and see the giant's causeway for yourself, stretching out into the sea. It's pretty awe-inspiring. Now, it's time to dip into our bag of happies and thank you for the inspiring pictures and messages which you've been sending us via Facebook Messenger and our website, supergreatkidstories.com. Hello to Kate Corkery's friend Rory, who is four, and a loyal Super Great Kids Stories follower in Fukon in Chile. Thanks to Lauren for the lovely picture of Baba Yaga and her hut on chicken legs. I particularly like Baba Yaga's spiky hair and the fence of glowing skulls on sticks. All rather spooky and brilliantly drawn, Lauren. And Bianca from Santa Cruz in California has sent two pictures, one of Nguenya and the crocodile and a self-portrait so that I can see what she looks like. I like the way you use your colours, Bianca. I wonder if your choice of bright colours is because it's often bright sunny weather in California, which makes you see everything in vivid colours. Thank you so much for sharing your pictures. And Delphine, who is six from France, has sent us an imaginative picture of her favourite story, Molly and the Leprechaun. Perfect for St. Patrick's Day, Delphine. I love the huge sun coming up from behind the hill and the way you've even given the clouds personalities. I'm very sorry to hear you've been unwell, Delphine. Hopefully listening to stories will help you take your mind somewhere else and that you'll feel better soon. And seven-year-old Dylan from Bristol in the UK has drawn a marvellously scary picture of the wolf from Toop's Stick Woman story. His wolf has superb evil-looking red eyes and is shouting in large letters, I could eat you, which makes the story feel like it's really happening. Thanks, Dylan. And thanks to siblings Hugo, who is seven, and Tilda, who is five, from Colorado Springs. Hugo has drawn a fabulous picture of Bikubai with his twirling moustache and natty red tie. Great the way you've captured him clinging onto that coconut, Hugo. And Tilda has drawn a dazzling rainbow snake which is all coiled around itself with bright zippy colours. Thank you, Tilda. And hello to super great kids story fans Hudson, who is five, and Addie, who is three, from Austin in Texas. 
And thanks to Matilda, who is seven, from County Kilkenny in Ireland, who has shared a lovely drawing of the two sisters in Nora and the Aki Fruit. Angel is singing, give one Nora, give one. And Nora is shouting, I am not giving the river one of my Aki's. I wonder, Matilda, if you'd be able to tell your version of this story to somebody at home. And Evelyn, who is six and living in Ottawa and from a British Ugandan family, has drawn a super great picture of the Russian story, The Sausage Tree. It has a great feeling of fun and it really made me laugh. Evelyn and her siblings Zola and Tam and their mum all enjoy listening to super great kids' stories every night. Thanks for your picture, Evelyn. And thanks to Ethan, who is six from Los Angeles, who has drawn some lovely pictures of the story of the bear who stole the wind from the Blackfoot tribe. Your sleeping bear is so huge and I love his sharp claws and the way he's snoring next to the sack of warm wind. Ethan's great-great-grandmother was from the Blackfoot tribe and his mum, who also loves stories, is from the Czech Republic. Lucky you, Ethan. You're so international. That's it for now. More thanks for all your inspiring drawings in the next story. You can see all these pictures on our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash supergreatkidsstories. And thanks to all of you who are supporting us on Apple Podcasts and on Patreon and on Ko-fi. Thanks to Vega and Rai and to Elizabeth P and her children and to Lonan and Ezra for your Kofi donations. And thanks to our new Patreon subscribers, James and Christopher. If you'd like to support us and get stories without ads and early, you can subscribe through Apple Podcasts or on Patreon, which you'll find on our website at supergreatkidsstories.com. Another way of helping is to share a review. We've had some lovely reviews this week. Thanks to Spindle23 from the UK and Unicorn Princess and Criollo from the United States and Termite Down Under from Australia and Elsa and Anna in South Africa and to Luke, who is four, from the United States. That's it for this episode. Listen out for another Trickster episode tomorrow. Keep telling your stories and have a happy St. Patrick's Day for those of you who are celebrating. This podcast was produced in Wardour Studios in London. 